makes it even better that like she's his actual wife. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. After every cut, he's all. <laughs> 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 Just, <yeah. laughs> I love his laugh. Yeah. Ah. Whew. Okay. All right. Welcome everyone. We're semblance of sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Ancient, Ancient Magus, Magus Bride. Bride. Episode, episode 16. Mm, we got yes. Silky's backstory. We did get Silky's backstory. It's very sweet. And, and now everyone sad. is home together. They are. Chise is uh, okay. Mm -hmm. She's okay now. Yep. She is healed. They had a little yes. bit of a, a, a janky way to heal her last episode, although it had some great symbolism to it. Uh, it did. The stuff with Elias being uh, kind of in that place of knowing that it was humans that accepted him, whereas the fairies have kind of oh, rejected yeah. him and kind mm -hmm. of tried to, you know, use him yeah, in that was some good. ways. I think him choosing to essentially not go along with their idea of having... Right. Uh, she say there. remain there yeah. and shift into whatever non-human form she would shift mm -hmm. into yep. uh, is awesome. Yes. Uh, I'm very glad that we got that silky backstory and we now understand why she cares so much about uh, Chise being there. And the time skip that basically happened yeah. because time was moving faster in the land of the fairies. And, and silky was waiting for them all this the time, whole making time. home ready for them. And it's, just, ah. it's so beautiful. Yep. And now we get just a nice, hopefully relaxing, yep. just... Just splendid just time of them all being time. together. Yeah. Can we nothing like, going wrong? Yes. Can can we just you know like not have anything bad happen? That that would that, be, that would be amazing. That would be awesome. That'd be great. It would also be good to break that pattern of having the subversion of like oh no she stays in danger and then suddenly she's you know not like the next episode uh, right. So if anything in this episode focusing more along the relationship dynamics, just the characters yes. all being together and yeah. interacting. Mm -hmm. be fantastic it would be all right ready i am so without further ado let's get into it all right yeah because it is winter now mm -hmm. oh jeez she say started well, that, off with a morbid thought. yeah snow's supposed to be like fresh beginnings and stuff okay hey mistletoe fairies basically wow they're dressed for the season yeah yeah, the whole original parts of uh, Christmas. <laughs> they seem much more like childish and chipper now than usual. Mm -hmm. Or maybe those are different creatures. It's like I'm being serious now. Yeah. <laughs> that was great, some nonverbal. Why is he distraught? What's wrong? Oh. Oh. <laughs> What's even the point? I'm done for. <laughs> oh. You're a good doggy. We love you so much. Yes. Oh. <laughs> what is this? It's like that's not exactly. Not exactly the best way to do this, but. I'm just a little bit cold right now. I'm just a little bit cold right now. <laughs> the way she's like, ah! <laughs> yeah. That was adorable. That was great. Oh, Ruth, we love you. We love yeah. you so much. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice use of his, uh, Who's that? his thorns. Okay. Wow. This is the horned cool. god and the dark lady that they were mentioning. Whoa. She looks a lot like the Queen of the Fairies. Like, but she's I know, pregnant. I, she's, she's very different, but... But you notice that she's pregnant? She had her hand atop her belly like this. Okay. It's always so pretty. He's like, oh, Solka. <laughs> And at one point, oh, that, that is that is that is that is gorgeous. At what point is he gonna say that about her, though? Oh, this guy's been around since the beginning. That <laughs> little, little fairies and stuff. Now, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> See, Elias, you're too tall. You don't fit under the mistletoe. Wanna try it? <laughs> He's like, 
。やりたそう。かがんでもらってもいいですか Oh. <laughs> It's very easy for him because he could. She's like, how does、James、this work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. And back to you. <laughs> nudge, nudge. Mm. He's like, hmm. Oh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> no. Ruth's just like. Oh, yes. Ruth's tail wags, yes. <laughs> this is what I've been missing. Can we just can we just do this in like forever? Like, okay. Little messenger bird. Okay, a centaur. Centaur <laughs> delivery service. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, she's trying to go、oh. to town. Yeah. She's trying to get. She's trying to get gifts. Yeah. Oh, hey. It's been a while. Okay. Oh, she was trying to contact. She say, okay. Christmas no present. Oh, she needs help with that. Oh my gosh. Yes. They can both go Christmas shopping together. That literal bonehead. <laughs> oh. Yes! Do it! That's right! Yes. This is awesome! This is so precious! What did she get for Elliot? Time together! Jasa! <laughs> Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> It's a very guy answer, very functional. <laughs> Now he probably just made it way more like,、yeah. difficult. Clothes for Renfred, maybe? Or maybe a new drape for his face? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alice Janega. Uh, exhaust. Nanda, Mukashimita, and Yasobos, Xeri Amoyane. Oh, oh, a drug dealer. <laughs> oh, well done. Yeah, <laughs> down. He's instinctively protects his. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 He just passed out! Just. No! <laughs> okay, so those are the ones following them from the restaurant. Yeah. I thought there might have been some magical、right. nature to one of them. <laughs> She has no idea. Mm. Yeah, I wonder how often she gets to do that with her friend. Oh, crap. Oh, shoot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. Crap. Yeah. Oh, it's Renfred. Okay,、yeah. awesome. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anything except that. Oh, withdrawal.、Mm -hmm. Crap. I wonder if him being a sorcerer got her through this like, permanently in terms of the.、Uh, oh, sure. You know, in terms of like. She has no desire to go back. Jeez,、mm -hmm. as a kid, that's getting addicted to it. Oh. What the heck? Uh, uh, huh, huh. No, thank you. What is this? 
That's where he got his scars on his face. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Wow. Holy crap. Dang. But he just threw himself in the way yeah. to protect her. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Oh, this is why she wants to take care of him so yeah. much because mm -hmm. look at how much yep. he's had to go through to keep mm -hmm. her safe. You know, even oh, a massive boy. part of his character design is a sign of that he protected her. Oh, and he's always saying she needs to be more careful. And... Yeah. Okay. Aww. All right. I knew I liked these two's dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to say. Hmm. Well said. In very apropos. Yes, very apropos. A real, a real place, Paddington Station. Remember? Uh -huh. The one that, that Elias killed? So, we'll see. She's not a bad person. <laughs> oh, <laughs>、<laughs><笑><笑> That's true, especially when he's not around. I was rightfully worried. But. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah.、Yeah
that that's mm. both that is both incredibly sweet and so so sad because yeah. that means that all the other times she wasn't right it's one of the and it's one of the oh. ever present things of her character of just mm. having gone through so much that sometimes the yeah. desire to just not exist so that she doesn't have to deal with that is more present than her desire to live which right. is why i think that part where the healer in the previous episode tried to yes. force her to fight back uh -huh. was kind of necessary right so that's that's good but in this episode by them having this sweet moment where uh renfred's apprentice and her just went out and went shopping and had some girl yeah. time and just you know talked about uh, her her awesome backstory. Mm -hmm. Oh, and and the one little scare that happened was totally like not an actual problem, and it just not allowed them all. to showcase how awesome they are. Ruth scaring the guy so much that he just he like foams up and, and just passed out. out. <laughs> like, and the other guy getting just kicked in the nuts so hard he's like lifted like, off the Ooh. ground like he just covers his legs like <laughs> do not want yeah. no <laughs> he, noped, that. he noped out of there <laughs> um it, in particular i really liked uh the comedy with ruth in the beginning because yes. there was this tinge of kind of sad thing of like oh the, 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 the good doggy mm, he really yeah, wanted yeah. to be protector and yeah. he couldn't and, and he's the, like I, I really care about you, say, but but I'm but, not yeah. I'm not a good dog. I can't yeah. do it. It's like no, you're such a good. You're dog. the bestest, goodest good dog. Ever. And he's like, I'm a good boy. He's like, yes, you are a good boy. <gasps> okay, I guess I'm yeah. a good boy. And then <laughs> the whole thing of saying like, actually, Chise is kind of cold right now. And she and Ellie Spencer and like, oh. like, and she's like, but I, that's just because I was just outside. But she and did the she, thing where she about she turned face and, and, and she sort of looked and is like, ah. but she no, she turned around like before she even started talking and that's a big distinction because she's like oh, not right. wanting to tell like that people to notice that she's lying you know like right yeah yeah, the, yeah. Uh, like, right. <laughs> and she did this kind of uh, like kind of look it was oh it was so adorable uh, it's like her trying to make ruth feel better but exactly. also trying to like do her thing of have people not worry about her yeah and it's yeah. A, you know it's a it's a she say was, thing because of who, 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 who her character is oh. but oh man the warm fuzzy feelings from the christmas setting mm -hmm. from the gift giving yep. with yep. silky kind of looking on and mm -hmm. her we now have all that context for why yep. she's you know yep. 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 watching when uh -huh. they do the family moments and stuff yeah, yeah. Um, and then Elias being a little bit more self-aware and asking questions yes, about what types great. of uh, emotions, emotions and, and what kind of adjectives mean. Right. And he's like, oh, so this is pretty? Or like, oh, this is me angry? Or, yeah. you know, those mm -hmm. kinds of things are like, oh, right. good. He's becoming uh, more self-aware, but he's also relying on Chise to be his instructor yeah. about human things. Yep. And that's really cool yeah. because I think we've talked about that, but we haven't actually shown that. Yeah, exactly. So this is right. a way for them to show it. Yep. in the wonderful mm -hmm. slice of life thing yep. and, mm -hmm. and even even the little thing of him giving her a teddy bear and being like oh yeah that uh angelica angelica asked, asked, asked for one when she was when like she was a kid she's you know, like nine years old or right. something and and the idea that he's made her one every ever year, since i guess that's amazing <laughs> and it's not because it's insincere or anything it's just he just that's all he that's knows that's all he knows is gift give, giving yeah yeah exactly and i'm guessing that if he was giving a gift to like simon or something he'd or be Lindell, like here's yeah. a teddy bear yeah. <laughs> and they're like uh -huh, like what am i supposed to do with this he's like well it's a gift you receive it yeah, yeah. And they're like awesome thank you elias yeah, yeah. like you're a good maybe, guy he's like mm. maybe then later they'd be like hey elias you should give, you know, if you're giving <laughs> someone a gift, you should, like, you don't have to do a teddy bear or something like that. And he'd be like, oh, you don't? What, what, what would you do? <laughs> My entire universe is shattered. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love these kinds of things where Elias isn't played up as being dumb. It's that he's... Inexperienced. Inexperienced. And it's yeah. kind of in the same way as there's the isekai bit for chise being brought into the magical world right he had the human world brought to brought him, to him. Yep. in well a said. very in a very unique way through chise right. chise is not the majority usual normal representation uh, no. of human right. beings yep. she's gone through insane amounts of trauma abuse and all this other stuff yep. that's made her perspective and reaction to things mm -hmm. uh very much uh unique and yeah. uh, uh i would say rare so when uh, 
when he gives a simple gift right. to her. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. He's and only ever given a gift to one person before, and that was because they asked for one. Right. So this is this is actually this actually is even bigger than him giving a bear to Angelica because oh, yeah. Chisei didn't ask for a gift. No. Nope. He was just like, you know, he, he at some point he thought, I should give her a gift. And that's that's also a cool thing. He's he's thinking in shoulds. Like he's right. it's one of those things where uh the centaur came and gave kind of a functional, practical idea for a gift. And I was like, Oh, that's yeah. such a typical guy kind of thing. <laughs> You should give him something that he uses all the time. It's like the gift is it doesn't matter. Like well, especially Elias, since like when I look at like the two jewels, they they're look, almost exactly the almost same. Almost exactly the same. But the yeah. fact that this one came from Chise exactly. and and the weird thing is that the first jewel might have just been some kind of magical conjuration. It might have no like physical properties at all. So it might have sure. been like, "Well, I'm going to end this spell and I'm wearing an actual physical thing." Yeah. Huh. This is gonna be new. <laughs> he like actually has to clasp it and everything like that. It would have been really cute if he's like, so um, I don't know how to put this on. Uh, like, right? He's just like, oh, I guess I don't need this anymore. He snaps his fingers and it just <laughs> fades away. I was worried that that would happen actually, and then she would be like, oh, so like, this is just a choice he makes as a mental projection of what he thinks a mage should I thought this would like. make me look cool and plus <laughs> this voice in my head that said they were the character designer said that <laughs> I should uh, wear this um, <laughs> I mean um, there might have been some magical properties to it and then he's just going to infuse those magical properties into sure. this as well so it doesn't really matter yeah. but, but I love that he accepted it with kind of a oh she got me a gift right? and he's like and she you know she just, you know, I, I didn't expect her to. Like, right. that's just exactly. kind of a thing of, like, I, I'm the master. I need to kind of give my mm -hmm. apprentice yep. their, you know, their proper kind of, like, I, I, you know, I'm the, in a weird way, he's kind of the superior. No, no, don't or, take this the wrong he's, way. He's the, he's the responsible one. The responsible one, the one. Yeah. exactly. In that she is not really responsible for him, but he kind of feels responsibility for her. There's a weird aspect where it can go into possessiveness, and I think Which Elias, they've been really good at not doing. They've been really good at not doing that, but yeah. if anything, this was a cool moment in the episode where Elias made some kind of scolding bits that could be seen as possessive, Yes, and it was good that Chise mm -hmm. and Ruth were like, hey, Elias, yeah. it's okay. I was, there, you know, Ruth's yeah. like I was there. It's uh -huh. No big deal. Even and though, he, even though bad things have been following her in a ridiculous fashion, almost like right. she's the main character of some show. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. And I like that uh, Elias kind of knew uh, a little uh, that to back off a little bit was a uh, was a good thing. Yeah. Even though he didn't fully. And, um, and Ruth kind of had to tell him. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And they did the thing of, you know, this, you know, you're, you're angry. He's like, oh, this is me angry. Yeah. I, I, I like that kind of right. interaction. That stuff's really good. Now, we also have to bring mention to the backstory that we got this episode. Like, we got, we got mm. a fully fleshed out bit for the character. I can't remember her name. Uh, I've just been referring to her as Renfred's apprentice. Uh, yeah, I, I feel really bad. I feel that awful, I don't especially because because before now, like like she she had a very cool like design and and her and Renfred's dynamic was awesome. Loved it, but she didn't really, have, she didn't really have too have a much of a character until this point. But now she definitely does. Yeah, definitely um, does. And the yeah. whole dynamic of bringing great. in uh, someone who used to be a drug addict because of their because of their parents is basically like hey. You want to see another uh, way that Chise can relate to someone? Like exactly. this is something that's really crazy. But they could have had it be almost any other type of kind of past trauma and such. But it was specifically my parents broke ba me basically. Ba basically, my parents inflicted upon me something that er that took away my will, took away my free will to choose. When you're right. under the influence of, you know, drugs at such a young age and stuff, it really it really can we shape can't it. even imagine. And like, we're not talking about like, you know, kind of the safer stuff. We're talking probably about the kind of things that would, you know, ruin someone's life, you know, irreparably. Right. Um or or, or almost permanently. Yeah. But the fact that Renfred came to her Maybe he sensed some magical potential, and that's, that's why he did the file, and the he vial, hit yeah. it against her wrist, and 
yeah. noted that it it reacted in some way so that exactly. she could become a sorcerer, which right. is kind of I'm guessing a, a a sorcerer test that he did. Sure, essentially, yeah. like they're saying that sorcerers are kind of a dime a dozen. <laughs> Right. mages are much rarer and yeah. he's basically like okay do you want to be here forever and she's like yep. hell no no yeah that, that was that was great that was a because okay if you think about it mm -hmm. this backstory was very short very and short. a lot of times backstories that are short can kind of feel cheap yes and you do not want a cheap backstory especially Never. when you're dealing with something that would be traumatic right but they didn't can, do that because then it can trivialize it and exactly the audience yep. ends up getting yep. the wrong uh, yeah, effect just, out of the whole thing. The complete opposite of what you want to have happen. But here they made it very like to the point. It didn't, and it didn't like di like dominate the whole rest of the episode. We it were didn't. able to have a ton of other stuff yeah. that was not the backstory. Mm -hmm. But it was very emotionally charged. And the way that whole delivery of the "Do you want to stay here forever?" and "No," you know, right? There's a difference between her and Chisei in that Chisei's right. sense of agency was almost completely stripped from her entirely. Like she wanted to die. Right. And um, yet, yeah. uh, Renford's apprentice she in particular did mm -hmm. like not want to remain in this state yeah. she had gone through it enough she had suffered enough already but had not been completely broken and i think that's a thing that might you know in sharing that story with chisei chisei hears that and maybe yeah. doesn't make all the connections but does hear the story of someone overcoming exactly. their past yep and yep. that's another yep. example of that chisei can get right. out of this okay oh yeah um and, and as we've seen so far she is she's making amazing progress also there's another aspect with someone being addicted to drugs that chisei might not be aware of because she was asking if drugs taste good um <laughs> that uh she was also like chisei on a on a clock essentially on a clock of oh. life being short or shortened and sure. i really really loved I'm kind of jumping around to specific things here, but I really loved that bit of having her open up the tome that locked in some kind of mini eldritch spirit thing yeah. that lashed out to attack her, basically showing the reason why her character wants to protect Renfred so much exactly. is because she feels like she owes yep. so much to Renfred, yep. thereby has a lot of compassion and care mm -hmm. for him, yep. but also has this... this other sense of duty loyalty but also like wanting to give a gift and the gift is right. that she wants to be she wants to be someone that renfred can rely on someone exactly. that yep. uh yep. just as much as she did with renfred and they they showed the withdrawal bits there oh and yeah having that aesthetic of having the dark kind of clouds mm -hmm. surrounding there um yeah yeah that that's that's real stuff right there, guys. If yeah. you've ever had to help someone overcome an addiction to something that's just actively tearing them apart, it's not pretty. It's just really no. not. It's something that is... It's not only something that's real and something that's present, you know, way more often than we'd like to admit in, um, in just the world, but also it's something that requires a lot of constitution on the person that's helping the the afflicted essentially yeah yeah so on both sides yeah on yeah it requires a lot of a lot of willpower and a lot of patience and a lot of drive in order to actually get through that but the it just puts up the whole dynamic between Renfred and her like it a, a lot so mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm excited for more character development from yes them. and especially like because okay like there's character development and then there's like what this was because this this sure. was crafted so well both in the ways that there were parallels yeah. between her character and Chisei's character the ways that they showed the the ways that they were like almost complete opposites yeah the um the whole parallels between her dynamic with Renfred and Chisei's dynamic with Elias yep um and the ways they set up their their character and why that dynamic exists mm -hmm. That's something that you don't see a lot in backstories. Like, right. one of the reasons why backstories are kind of cheap is because even if they do justice to the to the the tragic backstory, you don't see the effects of it now. Right. Right. Very you don't true. see how it helped shape them as a person. The idea that even the horrible things ended up making them better. who they are. Yeah, yeah, made them who they are. Exactly. Um, so the fact that this did that is really special. 
Yeah, it's really it's a it's a really special episode. In particular, that they've been doing this with a lot of the side characters who up until mm-hmm. now have been non-existent kind of blank slate characters. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited as they kind of move this towards some kind of eventual conclusion probably you know for like 25th episode or something like that where they can execute on a lot of these stories converging actually one of the things that i'm sensing right here is as we get more and more of these Uh backstories and stuff all of these characters involved can have some kind of uh capitulation of their of kind of the introduction of any kind of arcs that they could be going on right some kind of high emotional payoff basically yes. because we because yes. we now really know and care about them and and you know that doesn't have to be killing people off no because fact, I, don't, I, I don't i don't think this think is that, this kind, is that of show. kind of show but if right. they wanted to they totally could and it would suck yeah uh renfred taking that hit though from the spirit thing like a beast like a badass yeah uh really gave me a hawkeye mustang vibe yep yep now now this is the thing that's this is the thing that's different here with hawkeye and mustang they started off as basically equals in Mm -hmm. terms of uh their their relationship with each other they were essentially like there's there's not as much uh of a role difference they're both soldiers in this uh there's there's something else Mm-hmm. And I really like that in their roles of kind of being the teacher and the the, 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 know, the master, the student and the you know all that. Uh, this is this is something that shows Renfred is the kind of person who would take you know a near lethal hit. Yeah, like <laughs> then rather than let anything come near his uh, his right. apprentice. The fact that he survives is like. Pretty impressive. I mean, we've like we've seen worse in the show, like Chise getting impaled and all that. But right, that's 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 a big deal. Yeah, and and one of the things that uh, this show constantly does is it paints uh, characters in a light when we're first introduced to them that makes them look a little bit dark, a little bit scary, a little bit mm. antagonistic. And one of the things that I think that this is meant to do. Renfred is a great example. Renfred is a great example of that. But I think the reason why that's done is because this story has Chise as the main character. And to her, the world around her seems Um, dark. Yes. This is especially true in the beginning. It seems scary. It's a lot of things that basically she she doesn't, you know, care about her own survival. Mm So, yeah, of course. But as she matures, as she gets to know more about the world, as she gets right. to know more about people, as she begins to understand and accept herself, as she begins to move on from her past, mm-hmm. people like Renfred's apprentice, and by sharing this backstory, people like Renfred are now painted in a light of, wow, there's a lot of good things right. out there in the yep. world. There's a lot of yep. good people out there in the world. Yeah. And even scary ones like Elias, even you know ones that have a little bit of a yeah very questionable side like uh the guy who we showed at the cliffhanger in the end of this episode and the one in the last one yeah they're meddlers kind of just like the king and queen of the fairies are in some ways sure but we can't immediately you know assume right. they're bad the only people we know immediately are bad are cat cat gray pudding mick you know punches yeah. face in cartophilus the right. creeper kid yeah, screw although, him and everything he. Although he, I could see, is. I could see this being a setup for that other guy to not be like evil, like evil, like but, you know. Yes, but like he doesn't not, care as much about yeah. the he doesn't happiness care about and well-being of people. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But one of the things that they they have been doing uh, pretty well thus far mm-hmm. is taking the fake creatures and having them kind of be the instigators of plot. So basically, sure. the Fae... Because they're and, kind of beyond un, like traditional understanding. Right, and they also don't care enough about humans, you know, basic humans, to understand how they want things yeah. done. So they just kind of do things mm-hmm. and cause plot to happen. Sure. And then uh, Elias and Chise kind of respond in a way, like, you know, like proper protagonists. And this kind of introduction of having a kid that we don't know anything about is something new. Now yeah. I just I just want to bring this up because the last time they actually helped real people 
uh-huh. was a while ago. Uh-huh. Like, like it was a while. Sure, ago. if you don't count the um, the the what's it? When I say real people, I mean like sorry, humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm guessing this kid is a human, unless he's not. I mean, I'm, but he's I'm literally so called well. little little miserable human child or something like that by the 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 creepy kid I got the mean voice. Yeah, guy. yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to just, we'll have to see. I I don't know. I think it might. I think they could potentially do something where yeah, he's probably human, but then because he bumped into Chisier or something, some of her magic rubbed off on him or something like that. I don't know. Sure, maybe also the uh, this guy. Uh, I think his name was Ashenai. Yeah, yes. Ashenai. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he could be the kind of person who sees people with magical qualities to them. Maybe the boy has some kind of magic about him, kind of like. Renfred saw the magic potential in his apprentice and he just does this thing where he's like you should be moving along with that magic bit and transforms the kid into something sure. yeah yeah and okay. that's something that's basically child abduction in the human world so it's not good right. but uh you know we'll we'll wait to right. see what the context is when we get into the next episode yeah um uh, there was the mistletoe bit, which was the funny, awkward yes. kiss bit. Yep. It was and really hilarious. But then no, I, was... I loved everything with Ruth in this episode. Oh, Ruth was uh, amazing. Ruth getting the kiss for being dog. Yeah. His dog his tail story. wagging. Yeah. And his tail wagging. Yeah, 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 so we, was... I think we were in perfect sync yeah, when we were yeah. like, and the tail wags. That was uh-huh. that was amazing. Uh, yeah, that was, that, was, that was really good. No. Uh, Can we have more episodes like this? Yeah, I know that yeah. I know that you're you're probably right, Jacob, in that the people that watch this show don't want one hundred percent slice of life. They want like forty percent slice of life, sixty percent right. or, or at least not see not all of the stuff. people, you know, that watch this show. A good right. portion of them probably want other stuff too. Yeah, but but shout out in the comments and we'll see if the mods can pass any along to us. But like what are some of the slice of life things that you particularly like about this show? Um, because with us, I think that when they've done the the pure slice of life, mm-hmm. we've almost had like, uh, like this kind of breath of, oh, right. Oh, Everything's okay now. Everything's there isn't wonderful. There's something horrible that's just around the corner. Yeah. And we've had the most fun, I would say, when we get into kind of the backstory stuff, like when we get into or kind the, of the or the phoenix flying. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, no. that's that's the highlight probably so far. <laughs> Anything to do with uh, the land of the dragons. The land of the dragons and yeah. Uh, Uncle Nevin, of course. Right. But I, I really want, I really want more of this, mm-hmm. particularly so because there's a really dark uh, mood to this show. Kind of like how in the beginning, she said, was like, I wonder if I'll see you next fall. I'm like, wow, yeah. wow. Way to <laughs> All be right, a way doubter. to set the tone. Yeah, but that was actually great because then you're like, oh, okay. And then the next day the episode is all cheerful and lift yep. you right back up. Very true. So. Yeah. Yeah, I guess just let us know in the yep. comments. Um, and yeah, it, they said tomorrow, but that could translate to next episode. True, Christmas. <laughs> so, they could continue this a bit. They could, but like, something tells me their to. Christmas is going to be interrupted by yeah, Ash and I shenanigans. Yeah, like, probably, <sighs> probably. But I almost want Ash and I to be a problem so that they actually just deal with him and just. And he's just gone. And yeah. he's just gone. I don't cause, like Ash and I. Because Ash and I in the story is too mysterious right now to be involved with the conflict. Right. Actually. And it should be one of those things where it's like you're so mysterious that it's like uh, if you come over here, then we will assume that it is something of n- not the best <laughs> Yeah, they need to draw a magic circle around their house. Yeah, like, exactly. Ash and I bugger out of this circle or it's war like, yeah yeah get exactly out of and you'd be like more oh, and then it's like, like i'm not over trying to kill her or anything don't care get yeah. out of here yeah I, I also think that there is a spot in this show for extremely powerful beings that just go and do as they will and they showed that in this right. episode with the horned god and the dark lady which were just uh, casually yes. exposited by the uh-huh. yule little fey flying fairy things and I liked that because they showed it for right. like a few seconds, and it's and then it just was done. It's yeah, it's done. Yep, it's nothing yep, yep. else. There wasn't even necessarily any foreshadowing that's going to be a thing again because it might be just locked yeah. to the season of winter. And but specifically, Elias, maybe on the winter sol- solstice. Right, but Elias being shown hiding with Chise and protecting her informed us so much more of the story about those things right. than it really we ever know at all about Ash and I. 
which is really yeah. funny if you think about that those two we now probably know more about them just by showing that clip than we do about ash and i yeah so yeah, yeah. i don't mind ash and i because he represents something that's important for the show but they just but showed I, how they can do it better in this episode that's true that's true so yeah yeah. All right, guys. Well, if you want to watch the uh, next episode's reaction right now, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access. You can watch full lengths there. You can get on our Discord and chat with us about magic and fantasy or what have you. Yeah. And yeah, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.